Here's an explanation of example two in graphing a feasible region where we have three inequalities. We'll label them A, B, and C, and we need to uh, shade in the feasible region and then find all the vertex points. Oh, A here is a perfect opportunity for me to show you the CIA method, the cover-up method. Instead of putting this equation into y equals mx plus b, or y is greater than mx plus b, consider this option. Uh, to, to graph an inequality, first we're going to graph the equation x plus 3y equals negative 6. And by the cover-up method, I mean finding the intercepts. All you need are two points to make a line. Those two points can be easy when you consider finding what y is when x is 0 and what x is when y is 0. When x is 0, it's as if we just cover that one up and solve the equation 3y equals negative 6. That means y is negative 2. When we find the x-intercept, we cover up the y. So it's as if we just cover that one up, make it 0, x equals negative 6. Easy peasy. So now I've got those two points, 0, negative 2, and negative 6, 0. Got to make sure that I remember that it's an uh, inequality, so I am dashing that line in. And now to decide the shading. I'm going to test the point 0, 0, because it's not on the line. If it satisfies that equation, I will shade in its favor on this side. If it does not satisfy the inequality, I'll uh, shade the other side. Okay, we're putting in the point zero, zero. We're just testing it. That means is zero plus three times zero, zero, greater than, or, or sorry, greater than negative six. Zero is greater than negative six. That's true. We rule this way. We've in favor. Up, that line goes up. Okay, so far so good. One down, two to go. The next line or inequality, B is in slope intercept form. That's kind of nice. I'll go that way. The Y intercept is negative one, and then one third is the slope. Uh, rise over run. Three over, one up. Three over, one up or one down, three to the left. Okay, it's a, a less than or equal to, so I can put in a solid line, snap that baby in. Oh, that's not as good as I want. I want this. Eh. <laughs> one more time, with a nice straight line there. Oh, sweet. Okay. Uh, oh, I forgot to label. This is A. This one is B. And now for the shading. Uh, the, there is a shortcut when it's in Y equals MX plus B form. If it's less than, you shade below the line or less than or equal to. If it's greater than or greater than or equal to, you shade above the line. I'm still going to use the point zero, zero and test it. Um, even though I know it's probably going to go this way, is 0 less than or equal to 0 minus 1. 0 is less than negative 1. That's not true. Negative 1 is to the left of 0. That's false. So I'm shading, uh, as I thought, below that line. Okay, 2 down, 1 to go. Now x is less than 6. To graph the line x equals 6, when in doubt, just kind of uh, write it out. It's, we don't spend a lot of time on these horizontal or vertical lines, but the line x equals 6 means that every x coordinate is 6. So you can put in anything for y and plot those points. You will see quickly that that is a vertical line where x coordinate is 6. It's a inequality, a strict inequality, so it's going to be shaded right there. And if an x coordinate has to be less than 6, I'm looking for things that are to the left. 
things being x coordinates that are to the left. All right, I have my feasible region. It is this triangle. And now let's make sure we know the vertex points of that triangle, three of them, here, here, and here. I'm gonna go for the easiest ones first, the easiest vertex points. I know that because this um, triangle has these two points, the x coordinate is on this line, x equals six. So I know that that x coordinate is six. I don't even have, I can lock that in to begin with, and then just substitute six in for line A to get this coordinate, and line B to get the Y coordinate for that one. All right, let's go A first. If X is six, uh, here's my work down here. It's gonna be X is six, six, plus three times something equals negative six. I don't have to worry about the inequality now because I'm just finding points on that line. So I'm not gonna worry about it. I don't need to worry about shading. I just need to worry about securing what the Y coordinate is of that point. Six plus three Y equals negative six. Three Y should be equal to negative 12. Wait, three Y equal, yeah, negative 12. Whew. And Y is equal to negative four. So my point is six comma negative four. As I look closely, it's close. Um, my th there's some error in there, but you can always double check to make sure that six comma negative four satisfies that first inequality. Does it six plus negative twelve is negative six? Good, it does. All right, on to line B. Uh, I'm going to clean up a little bit here, and now going to make sure to find when. The x coordinate is 6 of this line, y equals x over 3 minus 1. When x is 6, y is 6 over 3 minus 1. That's 2 minus 1. y equals 1. That is the point 6 comma 1. Looks pretty close. Double check it to see that it satisfies part B. Now for this third point, this kind of apex or vertex of the triangle there. That is where lines A and B intersect. And so I don't have the option of knowing what either X or Y coordinate is. So I'm gonna have to isolate these two and decide if I wanna do substitution or elimination on them. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna start my work down here and say, okay, so A is X plus three Y is equal to negative six, and B is Y is equal to X over three minus one. Remember, I don't have to worry about the inequality because I'm just finding the equation of that, the, the location of that point. Um, I'm gonna fraction bust here, and I'm going to multiply this lower equation, this equation here, by 3 on both sides. I should get then 3y equals, distribute that in, x minus 3. Or once I line up the x's and y's, I will get, let's see, x plus 3y equals negative 6, that's equation A, and negative x plus 3y equals negative 3. How convenient, I've got opposite coefficients of one coordinate, the x. I can line them up and add the left sides and the right sides. The x's are eliminated. I get 6y equals negative 9. y is going to be negative 9 sixths, or negative 3 halves. Okay, so far so good. I know that the equi or the negative three halves. It's algebra two, everybody. You're gonna have uh, fractional locations. Gotta be okay with that. Y is equal to negative three halves. Where do I wanna put that into the uh, 
to find the x coordinate, I'll just put it in here. So if 3 times negative 3 halves equals x minus 3, negative 9 halves equals x minus 3. I'm going to add 3 to both sides, and that means 3 minus 9 halves equals x. Another name for 3 in common denominator is 6 halves minus 9 halves equals x. Negative 3 halves. The x coordinate is the same as the y. Negative 1 half, 1 and a half, negative 1 and a half. Negative 3 halves, negative 3 halves. Let's zoom in on this and double check and see. Does it look to be 1 and a half to the left and 1 and a half down? Actually, it does. It looks uh, pretty close. But sometimes you're going to have to confirm it with algebra. That's why you should always, always have substitution or elimination and a little fraction busting in your back pocket.